This is the 10 Minutes with Andrew podcast. Welcome back to 10 Minutes with Andrew. I'm, of course, Andrew, and I'm again joined by Mark Chancey. Welcome back to the show. Marky Tropicana. Mark Chancey. Got the hat on and everything today. Mark Chancey. We're golfing later on with our favorite golfing duo, the O'Reilly's, and we're, I'm going low today. Well, myself. I mean, hopefully. It, I think it is raining. Oh, again. no, we're golfing. Okay. Rain or frickin' shine today. I didn't golf Friday, and I didn't golf Saturday. We're golfing. Yeah, well. We're golfing. That was Andy Grammer. It was Andy Grammer. Back home. Back home. Reminds me of when we had a running club at work. Uh... And usually when I say that, people say, you used to run? Yes, I used to run, okay. <laughs> Matter of fact, I ran a marathon, just so you, you know. Did, you ran a couple, I think. There's not many people in the world can say that, but the whole group ran, ran a marathon. You ran plenty. Plenty. Uh, there's not many nooks or crannies of this city that I haven't hoofed over with my feet, I can tell you that much. But yeah. anyway, back to the story. So we'd take some photos of our runs, and we'd always meet, say, 8.30 on a Sunday, the group. Yeah. And we all ran at different paces, so we'd start together. And then we'd all kind of spread out, and we wouldn't see each other again for an hour or two. But we always found our way back home. Yep. And I used to use that song when I'd do some video uh, montages of the photos we'd take. Yeah. Andy Grammer, back home. Andy Grammer, back not, home. Not from the 80s. No. You picked that one. I did. You did. Well, it was on, it was on the, uh, the Licked site. So I just I saw it, and I thought it was a good song. It's a weird on. name. Andy Grammer, you mean? Licked. Licked is a weird name, you're right. Yeah. Because you say someone, I was on the Licked site. They're probably thinking you're on a site you probably shouldn't have been on. Yeah, that's true. It's a weird one. Licked, licked is a music site for those un- unaware. You can get like licenses and stuff for music. Yes, you can pay for the license to use in your YouTube videos because yeah. we do everything by the book here. We do. Costs a fortune, but we do it. We do. Yeah. It'd be better to probably not pay for it and see if you get away with it. <laughs> It's, yeah. That's how most of the world operates, actually. And I refuse <laughs> to be one of those people. Yeah, that's true. I refuse to be one of those people. So what are we doing today, my son? Well, today, yep. we are reading a Toronto Sun article. Well, I'll play the Let's Lead some... Okay? I'll play the Let's Read Some Tweets music. Yeah. Because I don't have a... Let's read a Toronto Sun article. No, because we don't. Yeah. Music. <clears throat> this is. Uh, well, before we get into that, I probably should just mention, just off the. Um, I was right after. I can barely contain my excitement. <laughs> What's coming? You were right after. I don't like to start. I was with that. right after. Uh, the Leafs did sign Max Pacioretty mm. to a PTO. That is. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, so weirdly enough, his agent actually came out and tweeted that he expects Pacioretty to sign a deal with the Leafs, which I thought it was weird that the agent would tweet that. But anyway, so um, the big question on overdrive. Yeah. When the boys were talking about it this week. Oh, the sixty-seven. Should thing? he wear number sixty-seven? Let him wear it. And for those who don't know what we're talking, I about, I really don't care. Just the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup was in nineteen sixty-seven. Should he wear 67? I don't, dun, ca- dun, dun, dun. I don't care, really. I don't give a crap. I don't care. Just I think wear it's it. kind of a middle finger up to all of it if you wear 67. Just wear it, yeah. Just wear it, man. It's your number, wear it's it. It's your number, wear it. You've heard it from the boys um, on 10 Minutes with Andrew. You've heard it, yeah. You've heard it here first. So, back to, let's read a Toronto Sun article. So this Toronto Sun article, uh, this is not going to be a, a good day, I don't think, for, for you. Because this is not going to make you happy. Mm, that thrills me. <laughs> Why did I get out of bed? Why did I get out of bed when your son tells you this isn't a good day for you, Dad? On the show, this today, this is not going to be a fun thing to talk about. It's not going to be a fun thing. I'm to sure talk. it will be. Who wrote the article? Steve Simmons. Steve Simmons. Well, let me tell you this. Long before you were born, Steve Simmons was writing. Yep. I'm not so sure he hasn't always been for He's been for the Toronto Sun for as long as I can remember. Uh, and he's not known for holding back. No, he's not. And he gets a lot of um, athletes and wasn't, coaches quite upset with him because he's yeah. he asks a lot of questions that I don't think they want to answer, wasn't or he writes a lot of stuff that I don't think they want to have written. Remember something about Steve Simmons was after the Leafs got knocked out. I think it was against Columbus or Montreal during COVID. Austin Matthews did like a p- post game media thing, and Steve asked him a question. After what he said, he really didn't appreciate that article he wrote about me. Well, I, he's not the first one to say that. Yeah. Um, 
controversial a little bit, but he's been around a long time. Yeah. And he, he's a good writer. And I will tell you this. This article that we're going to read here, yeah. there's nothing wrong about any of this. Okay, well, we'll see. So we are, we're we playing a game today yeah. called Let's Read a Toronto Sun Article. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to read it, and we're, I'll read parts of it, then we can talk about those parts. Can I have my copy? <laughs> you don't have a... Uh, you, you didn't give me a copy to no. follow, follow it along? Okay, so I'm just <laughs> I'm just here in the dark, right? That's what I'm here. Just here listening, am I? Okay. Now i got to pay really close attention. Okay. How long is this thing? It's, uh... I guess we'll find out. You're on page, page three, page four. No, page, okay, it's page only five. two pages, guys. It's only two pages. All right. All What's right. the title? What is the headline the of this headline article? The headline of this article yeah. is Simmons says, that's the first thing, Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins no longer deserve to be in charge of the Blue Jays. That's the we headline. can end the show, I agree. Yeah. All done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't even need justification for that headline. No. Um, then the first line of the article is this, where is the evidence or where is there evidence that Mark Shapiro and by extension, Ross Atkins can build anything resembling a world series champion? There is none. Where is the proof of that? There is none. This is Shapiro's 24th year in senior roles in Major League Baseball. He talks a better game than he plays. Uh-huh. He sounds almost presidential, specializing in buzzwords when he talks. He knows the World Series the way we do, from watching it on television. That's exactly right. He was close to getting there only once. In the final three games of the ALCS in, tw- in 2007, his then-Cleveland Indians lost to the Boston Red Sox by a combined score of 30-5. to five. Ooh, they were close. The, sco- the scores in the final two games at Fenway Park, 11-2 to two and 12-2. to two. Good, uh, good playoff games. So that clearly points out Mark Shapiro is not good. Well, he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing, but... Right? His, his group put the team together. Yeah. But continue. Shapiro's teams haven't won a playoff game since. Mm -hmm. Not in Cleveland, not in Toronto, not in the past 17 years. Imagine. It's easier to make the playoffs in baseball right now than it's ever been. It is for sure. When the Jays won their only two World Series in 92 and 93, only two American League teams made the playoffs. That's right. Today, six make it. Uh And Shapiro's teams, when they've qualified, snuck into sixth place each time. That's a fact. Yep, they've held on to that last wild card spot and snuck into this. Not like they own that for most of the year. That's true. I believe last year wasn't it the it was the Saturday of the last day of the season that they clinched the yeah. final wild card yeah. spot, and they didn't clinch by winning. No, they lost. They lost they on lost that Saturday. The, game. Yeah. the team they were that was also in it lost and put the Jays in. That's yeah. how, that's how they got into the final wild card <laughs> spot. Yeah. I remember last that. year. I Continue. remember that. That was that was quite interesting. With no playoff games one to date, the Blue Jays have been outscored 30-13 to 13 in wildcard games. This season, it's all gotten worse. In a sport that's become all about the long ball, the Jays are 12th in homers hit and 1st in home runs given up. Before you go on, can we also talk about the buffoonery of what they did last playoff game? When Jose Barrios yeah. was dealing, but Mark and the boys, who don't know anything about this, we, we were this was shocking to us, decided they were going to take him out after four innings? When he was dealing, and what happened after that? They came in, they got a hit, they scored a run, and the Blue Jays lose. And they only lost by like a run or something, but the Blue Jays couldn't score a run. because you know. Well, they couldn't score a run most of last year. But <laughs> they didn't score one this year, either. Then they, they did all that, they did win last and Atkins night, came out and said, I didn't know anything about this. Which is funny, because they were reporting before it happened on the telecast that it might actually happen. Yeah. Because that was the discussion. And then, like, Atkins came out and said that, and then Shapiro comes out and says, yeah, I knew about it. Yeah. So how did, did, Atkins didn't know, Shapiro knew. How did the boss know and you didn't know? It was all Snyder's fault. We have the three buffoons in Toronto. We do. Starting we really, at the top. We really do. Shapiro, Atkins, Schneider. We really do. Continue. You're right. I'm not in a really good mood right now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The bullpen has been close to atrocious. Mm-hmm. Its earned run average is 14th in the league, ahead of only the pathetic White Sox. The bullpen also leads baseball and home runs relinquished. The starting pitching is supposed to be the staple of the Jays. It's ninth in ERA in the league, third in home runs given up, and 11th in runs allowed. Offensively, the Jays are also ninth in slugging, eighth in runs scored, seventh in OPS and batting average. The improvement only coming because of a brilliant second half by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I bet you 
There's some really obscure stat that Ross Atkins could quote that is in favor of the Blue Jays. Yeah, I bet you there is. Right? Yeah. I bet you. I bet you. Be some, some really obscure stat that nobody knows about, but he, he'd probably quote that in his next press conference. He probably will, yeah. Yeah. We played. We, we should we, also. We won the most games of any team when we played between twenty-one and twenty-one hey, they, and a half degrees they, Celsius they, weather. <laughs> yeah, that's something we would do. They, they they won their last two though. They beat the Cardinals last night and the night before in eleven. Why are people telling you this? <laughs> You're like the second person in the last four hours that told me the Jays have won two in a row. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just mentioning it. I don't, I'm not. I'm just you know. Jays have won two in a row. I don't. I'm. I don't care. I'm just you know. They've gotten a pass since the trade deadline. When they started trading people, they've given themselves all a pass for this season. Oh, I should right? also. We should when also. we should be very angry at the fact that they're six games under 500 or five games under 500 with 13 games left in the season. Yeah. And nowhere near a playoff spot. But they've all gotten a pass and no one seems to care. They're excited about a two game winning streak against the Cardinals. Um, Davis Schneider got a home run last night. It's his first home run. Wait. Woohoo! <laughs> it's his first home run. Since IKF yep. was in the lineup. And if Atkins has a press conference today, he'll say, David Snyder has been incredible. Look at the home run. He's he hitting hit less than night. 200, but he'll just, he's incredible. It was hard contact. Hard contact. It was, it was, exit VLO was 114 <laughs> miles per hour. It's David true. Snyder has been incredible. It's definitely, definitely true. Also, there was a, Bob Nightingale made this statement about how the Blue Jays might keep Atkins, but put him in a different role next year. And then just like oh, I'd keep him. I'd put him in a very different role. <laughs> they might like they might just get a new GM, put him in, a, move him to a different role in the in the organization. You know what I'd have him do? Clean the toilets. Pretty much. I was gonna say mop the floor <laughs> under the men's urinals at the Rogers Center because you've ever gone in there to do your business. It's a disgusting mess. Yeah, it is actually. You're right. Most of the fellas in there are that drunk they can't hit the urinal. <laughs> That's what I'd have him do. Yeah, you can stay with the Blue Jays, Ross. But he'd probably figure out some way to farm that out, too. He probably would. You're right. Are we done? No, there's more. Oh, okay, keep going. Actually, there's quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. <laughs> well, not really. There's just... If you keep talking that way... Go ahead. Where do you start to unravel this mess? They need between three and five new everyday players. They need a revamped bullpen. They need more starting pitching depth. Yes, they need... They need power bats and power arms. Well, I was just going to say power bats, power arms. They need corner outfielders that can hit home runs. Yep. Right? Uh, we're going to need two, if not three, starting pitchers. Yeah, we are. It's true. And just a little minor detail, this tiny one like that. We're going to need a bullpen. We are going to need a bullpen, okay. yeah. That's all they have to do. <laughs> Most of all, they need ownership to step up and stop hiding and realize the time for serious change is now. Edward the- Rogers, where are you? People in charge can't fix the problems they've created. There's no proof of any kind that Shapiro, the club president, and Atkins, the general manager, can win anything with the Blue Jays. And you know what's funny about that? That line is perfect. Yep. They created every problem they have right now it's, it's is on fault. them. It is. You can't blame Alex Anthopoulos for the mess you've created. Speaking of Anthopoulos, this, the, the last like long paragraph here is uh, mentions Anthopoulos. Go ahead. It, it's, it brings up a lot of really but good But they points. created this. This was not handed to them. Yeah. They created this, and it started when Mr. Atkins said, we're going to play defense first. And they went out and they got people that can't hit, right? Yep. And, well, here we are. Shapiro all but bullied Alex Anthopoulos out as GM at, of the Jays at the end of 2015. Mm-hmm. Since arriving in Atlanta in 2018, after leaving behind playoff teams in 2015 and 2016, Anthopoulos' teams have won 34 playoff games, a World Series, and lost 31. Boy, oh boy. I wonder how his farm team is, though. 65 postseason games, six seasons. The Jays' playoff record in that time, 0-6. Yep. But he wasn't very good, according to Mark. And then, Yeah. And then he says, I do not put the 2016 Jays' playoff record on Shapiro. That was the team Anthopolis left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that when they won a game? Yeah, that was when they made yeah. it to the ALCS, <laughs> yeah. That was when they were going to take one more run at it with what... Alex left them. Yeah. Yep. He left behind that present and a prospect named Guerrero. Yep. What Shapiro and Atkins have built, not bought since. When, what have Shapiro and Atkins built, not bought since? When Canadian Rob Thompson arrived in Toronto for the first time as a big league manager in July of 2022. He manages the Phillies. Yeah, his Philadelphia Phillies had the same record as the Jays. The Jays were sixth in the AAL. The Phillies were seventh in the NL. Since then, they've played for a World Series, lost in the NLCS, 
and are World Series contenders this year and have played 30 playoff games in all, winning 19 of them. Hmm. The Jays are 0-4 in playoff games since then. I guess we should be thankful we had any playoff games, hey? Because <laughs> some teams didn't. Some teams didn't. Shapiro was particularly critical of Anthopolis' farm system. Yeah. And contended that he would draft and develop a team in the proper way. ESPN does an annual ranking of the teams by the core of their talent. The Jays were ranked 24th in baseball, second overall in the, ahead of the, only the White Sox, A's, and Angels. A's are the Athletics, by the way, for those that didn't know that, in the American League. Second overall on the list behind the Los Angeles Dodgers, Anthopolis' Braves, who are struggling with injuries to make the playoffs this year. The only real p- playoff race left in the NL East, or is the NL East, where the Braves and Mets will fight it out for the last spot. Yep. Is that the end of it? That's the end of it. Well, well, I, I cannot agree more. And if someone like Edward Rogers and the ownership group read something like that, they'd have to say, yeah, I do remember Mark Shapiro coming down on Alex saying that he ruined the farm system, but we had success back then, and now our farm system's the worst it's ever been, so who's that on? Yeah. That's on them. It's total buffoonery. In the 90, 92 and 93, the Blue Jays won the World Series. Yeah. After that, and for about 20 years, they were totally irrelevant. They were. They were horrible. Nobody went to the games. They had a GM named J.P. Ricciardi. Yeah, I was just going to mention J.P. Right? Ricciardi, yeah. Alex Anthopoulos, I can't talk today. Alex Anthopoulos came in, and for a few years, the Jays were getting better and getting better, but he didn't do a whole lot. And then... Around 2015, he said, this is it. We have a team that could do something. They were one game under 500 at the trade deadline. They went out and they got Tulowitzki. They went out and they got David Price. Do you remember Jason Grilly? I do. We love Grilly. Remember Grilly? Grilly was great, yeah. Uh, they shored up the bullpen. They went big. They went all in. After the trade deadline, they were the hottest team in baseball. They won the American League East. Yep. And they ended up losing the American League Championship Series to the... Uh, Kansas City Royals. Royals, yeah. I think that was 15. It might have been 14. No, no, no. Royals was 15 because Cleveland was 16. Right. So my point is Alex knows when it's time to make the move and go all in. Not to mention the fact that he picked up a guy named Jose Bautista off of waivers and was going to release him, but he turned out to be one of the greatest things that ever happened to the Blue Jays. I've never heard, and I've never heard, Alex Anthopoulos say, we're going to be defense first now. Nope. Offense wins baseball games. Look at his Braves. Look at every team that wins playoff games. Yep. They are offensive powerhouses. They are not defense first. We're going to catch and, and stop all the balls that are hit to us. Yeah. If you can't score, what difference does it make? You lose every game one nothing. It doesn't make sense to me. Yes, you got me riled up because it's not going to change. And I told you, they all, have all been given a free pass now, and they're all going to be back next year they with are. the same crap. And... They talk about the gift that was left to him, Vladdy Guerrero. Yeah. Now, I'm not totally sure yet what we have. Vladdy's been a monster the second half of the yeah. season, but it hasn't meant anything. It hasn't meant anything right? at he's all. Been, he's You're been right. playing free. He has no pressure. I haven't seen him do anything under pressure, so I hope to... I'm going to say a bad word there. I hope to Christmas uh, he can be that player that delivers when we need him to. Yeah. But they were left that gift, and they're screwing that one up. They are screwing it up. The kid has come out and said, I want to stay here forever. And they can't get a deal done with him? Oh, my. Oh, my. What else you got? I'm just looking this up now. Okay, I'll uh, I'll v- do some film. No, v- no, Vla- I got it now. Vladdy Guerrero um, signed with the Blue Jays in 2015. Yeah. That's when he came up. They actually have the date here. He, so he came his, up in 16. He signed on, he signed on July 2nd, 2015 for $3.9 million at 16 years old. And uh, he was he was extended an invite to uh, spring training to open the 2016 minor league season. He was, assigned, he was assigned to extended spring training camp to open the 2016 minor league season. And then he was in the minors until 2019 when he came up. And it was 19, was it? He came up in 2019, yeah. I remember when he came up. A lot of hoopla. Longer yeah. hair, too. Because Bo, um, Bo Bichette yep. signed after Anthopolis had left. Yep. But they did leave him Guerrero, and they are screwing that up. And we've talked about Guerrero a lot, about how maybe he's just, the games don't matter, that's why he's playing so well, but anyway. Well, the Blue Jays, like, if Laddie stays at first, that's fine. Still don't have a second baseman. 
right? They don't, not at all. We may or may not have Bo Bichette at, at shortstop. We may or may not. We do not have a third baseman. You're right about that. Uh, we don't have a left fielder. We don't. No, we don't have anything. We have a center fielder who can't hit. There's not a thing that we have. And we have a $25 million right fielder who is a great outfielder, loves the game, smiles all the time, but has been so streaky this year it worries me. We have No, we have a $25 million outfielder who is getting older and declining every year. Well, he's, he's shown some hot points. Maybe this one is a, an off year for him. I don't know. I don't know. But he doesn't... I don't know. We have too much tied up in, in George Springer. Too and yet we have... Uh, Gabby Marino and Lourdes Goriel Jr. fighting it out for a playoff spot. Yep. When we're in the uh, National League. But as I mentioned, Again. the Anthopolis' Braves apparently are struggling with injuries this year to make the playoffs. And they, and they and the Mets are fighting, actually. I think they're actually tied yeah. for the last spot right now. The Mets, yeah. But that's it. So. Uh, the Mets have uh, John Gibbons, by the way, former Blue Jays manager. He's their bench coach. He's their bench coach. Yeah, it was good to see him back in Toronto. Yeah, he's with a better team this time, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> so let's flip the switch. Ooh. Got back on the scale there uh, Thursday. Hey? I forgot my number. Yeah, you're right. I know yours, if you don't remember it. I don't remember it, though. No. You don't remember it? I actually don't. I'll uh, give no, you a hint. I, mem- I remember the... No, yeah, I... Remember? Okay. No, I remember, like, the first number. I don't remember the... You only need to, you only need to know what you lost. Yeah. Yeah. So you got on the scale on Thursday. Yeah. And you don't look when you weigh in. I don't. And I came into your room after and I said... You told me I was you're up. up. You were up 1.6 pounds. And I was and, so and angry. The look on your face. I was, it was a I bad had, look. I had to step back because I thought you were going to punch me. But in actual fact, <laughs> what happened? It went down 7... Point. Point. I can't remember the other six. that. 7.6. 7.6 pounds. First week, though. Always a big one. Yeah, first yeah, week. But good start. And I was down 6.8. That's awesome. Yeah. So... Let's keep her going, because like I said, the first week is simple. Yeah. If you stick to it. Uh, it won't be 7.6 next week. Although with you, it could be. <laughs> the way you go. <laughs> That's all good, hey? Yeah. It is all good. And 252 on the T sheet today. We are, indeed. Let's make sure we uh, get warmed up, because I'm going low. Marky Tropicana will be at his all-time best, and I will tell everyone about it next Sunday. You think, you think you're going to be at your all-time best today? All-time best. That's... That's not, a, that's not a very high bar, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> or in golf, it's not a low bar. Well, Solheim Cup, too. Love yeah. the Solheim Cup. That's the women, women's golf, uh, those, USA versus Europe. Yeah, that's like the women's right. And the cup. U.S. is winning 10-6 right now with singles matches today. Absolutely love it. Also, the President's Cup is soon, I believe. I think that's next weekend, isn't it? Or is it in October? I'm not sure. Not anyway, sure. So is there anything for else those to that are interest, For those that are interested, um, the Leafs had a prospect game yesterday. Yeah, I'm not interested. No, no neither am I. But go ahead. But they did win fourth. We're going to shoot up against the Canadians. Against the Canadians. Yeah, long, it doesn't matter. Who, it wouldn't matter be, who's playing. It wouldn't be a be Leafs game. It wouldn't be a Leafs game if they didn't blow a three-one lead. And they did blow a three-one lead. So, yeah, but they won. They did, they did a real win. Leafs game is you just blow the three-one lead. Yeah, but they, right? they did win. Let's not be silly. That's true. That's true indeed. So thank you for listening and watching this episode of Ten Minutes with Andrew. Find us on YouTube. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be back in the middle of the week with Would You Rather. What? Okay. Would you rather? All right. All right. See you later. See you later. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on notifications to be notified when we upload new content. You can also connect with us at andrewchancy.com. Find a way back home.